Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today I want us to talk a little bit about noise, but I want to step back a little bit. Because the first thing we always think about with noise is building the barrier. How do we reduce noise transmission from source to receiver? So how do we reduce the noise transmission from the garbage truck to our bedroom or from the garbage truck to our recording studio? We build a barrier. That's the first thing people think about. But there's other paradigms in this noise situation that we need to look at, OK? How about if we locate the room in a quieter place? If we do that and we reduce our ambient noise levels, we cut the amount of materials we need in the barrier, OK? Noise source. We have to measure the noise source. We have to realize that noise is composed of a couple different components. Bass, as people call it, or low frequency, is more of a felt situation, OK? The, the waves are big, so the noise that we, we get, you know, it's through our bones, through our skeletal system, it's conductance. We get a lot of calls from elderly people where the bass notes, the low frequency notes from a restaurant or a bar or a club or something like that, it drives them crazy, okay? The low frequencies drive people crazy as we uh, age and mature, and the high frequencies increase reverberation time, and that really drives us crazy because our hearing systems do not like high reverberation times as we mature. I'm sure there's a lot of physio psychophysical reasons, physiological reasons for that, but we won't get into them for this video. So we want to reduce the noise output at source. This is a common thing that we can do. We get a lot of complaints from people in condos, people walking overhead. Well, how about going up there and explaining your situation to them? Take a recording of what you hear. Play it back for them. Is there any way we could help with this? Can we reduce things at the source at your end? Maybe keep the children from running across the floor at certain times when you're trying to sleep? I don't know. But we want to consider reducing the noise output at the source. If we have less free, uh, amplitude to deal with, we have less issues, OK? Make sure we remember that the barrier design, that's what we build between a source and a receiver, is frequency and amplitude dependent. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that you have to build a barrier to match the noise, to match the frequency and the amplitude of the noise, specifically. You can't guess with this stuff. You'll guess wrong. You got to know the noise, frequency, and amplitude, because Every material you use is dependent on the strength and the frequency. Frequencies below 125, completely different barrier technology. Some of the same material types, but completely different arrangements. Above 125, completely different layers and densities. Okay? So we, we want to reduce the noise energy in the source room. Obviously, that's a good thing to do because then we have less to deal with. Now, that may be possible. That may not be. It just depends. But I always tell people, why don't you go to your neighbor or why don't you go to the source of the noise and deal with that? You know, cities have ordinances on noise. Maybe you can help get the city involved to help further your cause. There's all kinds of things to do. Building something, probably the easiest. Measuring it and getting the noise measurements accurate, not so easy, but, you know, most people can get it done. I think we've, with our process, done over 1,100 noise measurements. So it's a good system, and it's very accurate, all right? So we want to minimize airborne and structural noise issues. Here's a, a thing we run into all the time. The air conditioning system is on the roof. They transmit vibrations through the whole skeletal system of the building. Concrete, steel, it doesn't make any difference. You just simply raise that compressor up and put it on isometric springs and isolate the vibrations from the compressor from the structure. Huge difference. 10 dB, 8 to 10 dB difference. Just with little springs. Now it's a process, lifting the 
compressor up and putting the springs under it, but it ain't that big of a deal compared to the benefits you get and the less money you have to spend inside the structure. Reduce vibrations at source. We do that with our subwoofers. We reduce the amount of energy as close to source as we can with our carbon technology through absorption, okay? Noise like water, you'll find the weakest link and go through it and don't forget about this flanking noise. People in condos, they say, all right, well, we have a common wall. We're here, they're here, so we're gonna treat this side of the wall, okay? Well, what's gonna happen when the noise does this? What's gonna happen when the noise does this? That's gonna be a problem. So you wanna be careful here. Noise is complicated. Measure, measure, measure. The old carpenter adage, measure twice, cut once, really applies here. Noise control paradigms. Let's think a little bit differently than just a barrier. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.